Mary, he's here. Who? Jesus, he's back at last. You know, for me, it's incredible to be doing this. And also, that Roma agreed to play Mary was thrilling for me. You know, it's my wife, I love her. I know she's always loved Mary. And the fact that she agreed to play this role has been great. And she, her performance has been incredible. I mean, when you see it on the screen, you just, your heart breaks with seeing Mary crying inside and out for the life of her son. You know, I think this is probably going to be the most physically, emotionally and spiritually demanding day for all of us up here. Uh, as Mother Mary, of course, it's say, uh, to see this day through her eyes is really almost unbearable, unimaginable, to think of what that must have felt like as a mother to watch your son brutally murdered in this way. As a producer of this project, to have gotten to this moment, you know, this is probably the most iconic moment in our faith, in our book, The Crucifixion of Jesus. I always believed Roma needed to be in this series. We're never going to do this again in the rest of our lives. This one opportunity. I didn't plan to, to play Mary from the get-go. I, I, I had actually never planned to be in the series at all. I had my producer's hat well and firmly on my head, so I wasn't thinking in terms of performance at all, to be honest with you. 1,000, take one. First, we tell the story of young Mary, an angel Gabriel, coming to her, and the beautiful story of the nativity of the birth of Jesus. So we cast Lila to play young Mary, and we were looking for an actress to play older Mary. We needed somebody that looked a little bit like Lila, and Mark said to me, would you consider playing the role yourself? It was a great privilege for me. I have loved Mary my whole life. I was raised as a Catholic in Ireland, and I grew up with great affection for and love of Mary. And so I stepped into the role, opened my heart to it, and it really stretched me as an actor. <laughs> A lot of the emotion of the scenes plays through looks to convey the intensity of that emotion. Rama was my mother all the time, all the time. She knew how tough it would be the task. So suddenly, when the chance of, of Roma being playing Mary Mother, I uh, was just like, please make it happen. It has begun. It's a really demanding role for, for Roma, and she's put an enormous amount of work in, in, in getting it right and uh, getting a feeling for the agonies of her son at the same time, understanding his destiny. And she's made a very complex and interesting portrayal of that. It helped enormously, I think, that over the course of the shoot, that my relationship off screen with Diogo became very, very close. We spend a lot of time discussing the scenes and discussing scripture. And I think that closeness allowed for an authenticity in the connection between us, because so much of what we had to do played out silently from one to another through our loving exchange on camera. By the time the crucifixion was shot, the disciples, Mary, the mother of Jesus, played by Roma, Mary Magdalene, Pilate, Caiaphas, this cast had got to know each other and felt it and allowed for an incredible intensity and authenticity for the viewer to experience it. <laughs> It's a massive deal making a series on the Bible anyway, and then when you come to the day when you have to do the crucifixion, the pressure is really on to do it justice. I think emotionally everyone's pretty highly charged. We had to make sure that the scene was going to be safe, first and foremost, that Diogo was going to be safe. We did tests with the cross. We had several uh, crosses that were made. We did a test with the cross with him walking with it. The cross that we ended up hanging him from had to be a much sturdier cross, a very secure cross. We had to build a platform on which we could get Diogo up onto the cross. We had our stage assistant directors went up on the cross. We did various tests with different people to make sure it was safe and so on. 
What actually was interesting is that in Morocco, over the years, they had filmed a number of Bible projects, and so many of our crew had worked on a number of previous crucifixions. And so we were able to call on their wisdom and their expertise and how to do that and how to uh, make sure that it was safe. As you can see, we're on one of the biggest scenes of the whole film, which is the crucifixion. So. That requires this rather large crane, which will give us a chance to get up on top of the cross and see the action up and below, and so it's quite, quite a good tool for that, and uh, allows us to move the camera really quickly. The cross has to be raised with, with actually Diego on it, so the, the, the steel plate that's bolted into the ground has to be really strong, which is one of the problems we did have, getting it strong enough to hold his weight and the weight of the cross. I worked out uh, on the gym like for two, two weeks before the crucifixion. So I was preparing all my muscles for the difficult position that would be in just being on the cross the whole day. And then we had this kind of harness that was sustaining my, my weight. 80% of the time I was just sustaining all my, all my weight on this small piece of wood on, under my feet. And I needed to change because it, it only has space for one. You can't put both feet there. Profile shot to have Diogo camera right and the criminal over here camera left. Without hesitation, I would say the biggest challenge we had was filming the actual crucifixion on Golgotha. And um, I think that was a combination of factors. First of all, it's a very technical scene, you know, to make it look realistic that Jesus is being nailed to a cross and then being pulled up by Roman soldiers. And it was very, very demanding, obviously, from the point of view of, of makeup. So every day we were, we were taking like two hours for makeup, the minimum. So during the, the, all the carrying the cross and the crucifixion, it's the whole body. Working with Diego has been just a pleasure. He's become a beautiful person in my life and it's really been an interesting journey to go through with him. Ah! It's a horrible thing to happen to anybody and to, to create the scars and the whip wounds and all the other things that go along with it really makes you think about the process and, and what Jesus really, really went through. I mean, it's, it's horrible, it's absolutely horrific. And if you spend half an hour recreating a wound that was just inflicted with cruelty in such a short time, it really makes you think about it. When I was on the cross, there was a lot of wind and I was not hearing anyone. Everybody was talking, but I wasn't listening because I can't, but the wind was so strong. But suddenly, I saw a lot of people in movement, and I felt so alone that I screamed. I screamed. But suddenly, it was like a bath of regret. No, that's wrong. They're trying to do their best. And a whole hour on that cross after this moment, I just love to watch everyone and the way they were trying to do their job and I felt blessed. So since that day on, every time that things are really crazy and tough, I just pause, breathe, and think you should be grateful. Why? Can I have attention, please? Why? Let's have a nice round of applause for Diego and our two criminals, guys. Well done. And when he came off that cross, he just collapsed. We were just hugging him for a great long time because he was really emotionally drained as well as physically exhausted by being up there. We've just wrapped, the sun is setting. We finished the crucifixion scene. It was a epic few days, but very powerful, very emotional. So tomorrow is another day. We did great work up here on the hilltop, and I'm happy to say it's a wrap. It's episode nine that deals with the trial and the crucifixion and the death of our Lord. And at the very end of it, we tease the resurrection. Who are you looking for? Then episode 10 steps fully into the resurrection of Jesus, the ascension of Jesus, and then Pentecost. It's an epic day. We're dealing with the resurrection of Christ today. This location to find these tombs on the scout took us a while, and uh, it's a bit epic to get here across a couple of rivers and uh, quite a drive but very very worth it. We're actually working in a real tomb which is difficult because it's very small so uh, we're just trying to get that magical sense of the light opening for sort of coming back to life a bit. The sun is right here at the moment which is all right but by the time we get to do it it'll be over here, be in the wrong place as it often is. 
So um, just working with as is our spectacular gaffer to bring up some kit, make that effect in there. Go and tell our brothers. I am here. It's our final day shooting and it's been amazing. I have worked on the scripts for a year, which sounds like a very long time, but there's a lot of work to be done in pulling out all the best stories from the text and really getting to know the history behind it. The project was very ambitious for the scope of it to go from Genesis through Revelation. And we had a tight schedule and what we were able to achieve, what we were able to put on the screen is extraordinary considering the confines of our budget. I mention it only because occasionally in order to achieve what we had to achieve, we did double shooting. We would send off splinter units to do smaller uh, shoots and keep the main unit for the main drama. The most extraordinary coincidence had it that on the last day of filming, we ended up scheduling Adam and Eve, and John and Jesus on Patmos. So on the last day of filming, we were doing Genesis and Revelation at the same time. On this last day, we both couldn't be both places at the same time. So Mark went off to oversee the filming of Adam and Eve, and I remained on this beautiful location that I still can't believe we found in the desert, that we found a reservoir that looked like it could be a Greek island. I remember I just finished in time to rush across to get to the last part of filming with Roma's main team. Mark's been on a different set. He's been in paradise over in the Garden of Eden shooting Adam and Eve. And I've been on the island of Patmos shooting um, John and uh, Jesus for the book of Revelation and the end of the movie. And we're here and it's our last scene. Mm -hmm. And as the director called Cut, that was a weird moment for all of us. Did we really just finish filming? I remember that day, Roma and I um, had, had a gift for Diogo, who played Jesus, and it was a first edition King James Bible from the 1600s, and Diogo was very moved by this, and um, he said, I have something for you, come with me. There was no English words to describe how, how grateful I was for everything that happened to me because this project it changed me as a person. So the only way of telling them thank you the way I know is the way I grew up with the words thank you. It was saying obrigado in my language, it means thank you. I hold their hands and I just did this prayer from my heart in Portuguese. It was one of the most moving things of my life. I can't even explain. I didn't understand one word, but I understood everything. And that was his gift to us. Peace be with you.